Welcome everyone to part two of this tutorial series where we're creating this low poly island in Blender. Now if you haven't seen part one then definitely check that out. There will be a link to the playlist in the video description. So this is where we left off in part one. So we had modeled the island and the tree and we also added the plane there for the ocean. And in this part we'll be doing a bunch more modeling and modeling some more of the objects. Now just a few things I want to go over before we get started. If you'd like to help support me and this YouTube channel, then you can purchase the tutorial files on my Gumroad store, and you also get access to the tutorial files if you join my Patreon page. And checking out my Gumroad store and Patreon page are really great ways to help support me and this channel. All right, so one thing that I want to do is I want to kind of reposition the camera a little bit, and then also I want to make the tree a little bit smaller because it is a little bit big. So what I'm going to do is press B for the box select, and what I want to do is just drag a box around all of the those tree objects just like that so I can now press s to scale and I want to scale that down a bit and then I want to press G to grab and I'll bring it down on the z-axis and just make it a bit smaller kind of like that and then there is a lot of space out here around the camera so I'm going to select the camera and then what I actually want to do is click right over here on the camera settings the object data properties for the camera now I want to actually adjust the focal length what I want to do is I want to set the focal length to like a 70 I think setting the focal length to 70 just makes the scene look a little bit better and then I will also press G to grab and then I can double tap the Z key so after you press G to grab if you double tap the Z key that is going to bring the camera back and forth and I can just bring it in a little bit and then I'll also press G to grab and kind of bring it down a little bit so something like that that is much better and we can adjust this later if we need to but I just want to kind of set up the camera in a better spot all right so I'm now going to be modeling the treasure chest so I'm going to make sure this 3d cursor is back in the very center of the scene so I'm going going to press shift s and when you press shift s this pi menu will come up and I'm going to go to cursor to world origin and that way it's going to set the 3d cursor to the very center of the 3d scene so I can now press shift a and to create the chest I want to go right up here to the mesh and then I want to go right over here and I want to add a cube so now that I've added the cube I kind of want to be able to model it without seeing anything in the way of it so I'm going to press g to grab and then I'll hit z and I'm going to bring this up on the z axis and I'll just click to play that and then I'll press s to scale and I'm going to scale the cube way down so it's a much better size and then I can also press the period key on the numpad and that'll zoom me over to the cube now the treasure chest is going to be the same on each corner so what I can do is I can delete half of the mesh and then delete the other half of the mesh and then we can add a mirror modifier so that we can just mirror one corner and then it will mirror it over for the other sides so what I want to do is press the tab key and that is going to take me into the edit mode or you can also click right here and go to the edit mode so I now want to add a loop cut so that I can delete half of the mesh so to add a loop cut I'm going to press Control R and then you can see that it's going to show you the different options to add a loop cut and then I will left click and then right click just to add a loop cut right there so now that we have a loop cut in there we can delete half of the mesh now I also want to add a loop cut back and forth here so that I can delete this half of the mesh so I'm going to press Control R and then I can left click and then right click so it hops it back to the center there so I can now hold down the Z button go into the wireframe and let go and I can press A to deselect everything and then I can press B for the box select I'm just going to box select all these vertices and then I can navigate right over here and I'll press B for the box select and just drag a box around these vertices as well so now we have all of those other vertices selected so I want to delete them so I'm going to press X to delete and let's delete the vertices and then I can hold down the Z button and go back into the solid view so we now just have that corner of the box selected but let's click right over here on the modifier our properties and then I'm going to click on add modifier and I want to go right down here and add the mirror modifier so when you add the mirror modifier you can see it's going to mirror it over from where the object's origin is now it's mirroring it over on the x-axis but I also want to mirror it over on the y-axis so I'm going to click on the y as well and now you can see that it's mirroring it over here and over here as well so if I press like G to grab you can see that all four sides are going to mirror the same way around now we do have the proportional editing on and I don't want that. So I'm gonna press the O key or click right here to turn the proportional editing off. And let's press Control S to save. 
Now this isn't really the shape of a treasure chest yet because it is square. So what I wanna do is select this face right here and then I wanna bring it out so it's a bit longer. Now, so far in this tutorial series, whenever we've gone into edit mode, we have always been in the vertex select so we can select vertices. But if you click right up here, there is the vertex select, but there's also the edge select. So if you click on this, now you can select edges and the shortcut key for this is the two on the top of your keyboard. And then to select Select the vertices or to go to the vertex select it is the one on the top of your keyboard or also you can click right here now I want to select the entire face so you can click right here and that's going to go to the face select or the shortcut key is also three on the top of your keyboard so one two and three to go from vertex select edge select and face select so now what I want to do because I'm in face select is I just want to select this face and you can see the entire face is selected so I'm now going to press G to grab and then I'm going to hit X to bring it out on the x-axis and I'll just bring that out a little bit. So now what I want to do is kind of shape it more so that it is the shape of a treasure chest. So I'm first just going to navigate down here and I'm going to select this bottom face and I don't want it to be quite that long going down. So I'm going to press G to grab and then I will hit Z and I'm going to bring it up on the Z axis. And then also something that I want to do is I want to click on this clipping button right there and that way if I press G to grab you can see that that is not going to come out so it's going to be merged together where the mirror modifier fire is. Now I also want to select this face right here and I want to extrude it up and kind of round it for the round chest. So I'm going to press the three on the numpad and that is going to take me to the side view. So I'm now going to press E to extrude and I'm going to extrude it up and then just place it right there. And then I can press G to grab and I want to bring it in on the Y axis. So you can hit Y and that is going to bring it in on the Y axis. But what you can also do is you can click and hold with your mouse wheel and then just drag and then you can just bring it in and and then click to place that. So let me just do that again. So you can press E to extrude, that's going to extrude it up, and then I can just click to place it there. Then I can press G to grab, and then I can click and hold with my mouse wheel, and then just kind of bring it over until it's going on the Y axis, and then let go of the middle mouse button. And then I can just bring it in, and then click to place it right there. I'll just do that one more time. So E to extrude, bring it up, click to place that, and then G to grab, click with my mouse wheel, bring it in, and then just place it right there. All right, and then I'll also press G and Z and bring it down just a little. All right, so now we have that round treasure chest shape, and that is what I'm going for. Now, what I also wanna do is kinda add a little bevel there, basically just add another little face there where it's really sharp. So what I'm gonna do is click right up here, or you can also press the one on the top of your keyboard and that's gonna to go to the vertex select. So I now want to select all of these vertices so I can actually select them all at the same time. So what I'm gonna do is hold down the alt key and then just select that loop of vertices. So when you hold down the alt key and then select, it's going to select all of the loop of vertices. So you can see if I select it down here while holding down the alt key, it selects all of these vertices. If I hold down the alt key and select right there, it's gonna select all the vertices going down. Now I did select this one so let's just hold down the shift key and then select that and when you hold down the shift key it'll select multiple vertices and then also right up here hold down the shift key and then just select that vertice so now that I have all those selected I want to add a bevel so what I'm gonna do is press Control B and then when you press Control B you can drag with your mouse and you can see that it's going to add a little bevel there so it's basically just splitting the faces and so it's adding another face right there and that is exactly what I want all right now what I also want to do is add some little metal beams. So what I'm going to do is click right back here on the face select. And then what I want to do is select all these faces going down. So again, I can hold down the alt key and then just select that loop of vertices. And you can see that it selected all of them going all the way down. So I now want to duplicate them and move them over. But right now, if I duplicate them and try to move them over, they're going to be connected to the mirror. So right over here on the mirror modifier, I just need to turn off the clipping button. So when I turn Turn that off now if I press shift D to duplicate and then hit X to bring it over on the X axis you can see it's not going to be connected to the mirror and I'll just click and place it there now I want to make this much smaller so I'm going to press S to scale and then I will hit X to scale out on the X axis and I'm just going to make that much smaller to something like that then I can also press G to grab and I want to bring it over on the X axis and I'll just bring it over like that 
click to place that. So this is actually overlapping the other faces right now because it's at the same exact spot. So I actually want to scale it up and make it a bit bigger. So I'm going to press S to scale and we're going to scale the entire thing out just like that. Just click to place that so that it's a little bit bigger. So something like that. Now before I give it some thickness, I also want to click on the clipping button to turn the clipping back on. All right, so now that that clipping is turned on, I want to give it some thickness. So I'm going to press E and E is going to extrude out the faces. So it's going to give them some thickness. But then immediately after that, I'm going to press S and S is going to scale the faces. So after I press S, I'm going to press Shift X. And when you press Shift X, that is going to scale it on the Z axis. So up and down and on the Y axis back and forth, but it's going to not scale it on the X axis. So I'm now going to bring it way down and then just click to place it right there. So now that has some thickness. Now, as we talked about in part one, we need to recalculate the normals. And I briefly talked about flipping the normals in part one of the tutorial series. Um, and you can see that the shading is a bit off and I can just tell from the matte cap that I'm using kind of the shading there that it looks a bit off. But if you don't know for sure, you can press the tab key to go back into the object mode. And then if you click right here on this little arrow, that's gonna open up the overlays and you can turn on the face orientation and you can see that there is red there, but we don't wanna see red because red is the inside of the faces. We wanna see blue because the blue is the outside of the faces. So I can just click back on the face orientation to hide that. And then I'm going to press the tab key to go back into edit mode. So to recalculate the normals, I'm going to double tap the A key, just hit the A key a few times to make sure everything is selected. And then I'm going to press shift N. So shift N will recalculate all the normals of the faces that are selected. And now you can see that shading looks much better. Now, just like this right here, um, I want to give a bevel on that metal piece. So I'm going to click right here and that is going to take me to the vertex select. You can also just press one on the numpad to go to the vertex select. So I'm now going to hold down the alt key and then just select that loop of vertices and just navigate down here and make sure that it selects the entire loop of vertices. So I now want to give that a bevel there just to kind of give it a little bit of an edge. So I am going to press control B. So control B is going to bevel that. So just just bring your mouse out and then just click to place that there. So now you can see it has a bit of a bevel. So I want to do the same thing for the other side. So again, you can just hold down the alt key and then just select that ring of vertices. And then to give that a bevel, again, the shortcut key is control B and then just bring your mouse out and then just click to place that. So now you can see that those little metal pieces there, they have a little bit of a bevel on the sides. So I want to create another one of those metal pieces, but instead of it kind of going up here, I want it to go around like this. So I'm going to press the tab key again to go into edit mode. If you went back into object mode, just press the tab key to go into edit mode. And I now just want to select those faces right there. So again, you can click right here to go to the face select, or you can also press the three on the top of your keyboard to go to the face select. So I'm going to press the A key to deselect everything. And then I will hold down the alt key and just select that ring of faces right there. And where you select it is right about here. So just alt and then select that ring of faces. If you like alt select it right up here, it's going to select it going back and forth on this way on this direction. So just make sure you alt and then select right there. So it's going on that direction. So I now want to duplicate this and then just kind of scale it down. So I'm going to press shift D to duplicate. So I can now immediately after that, press S and we are going to scale that down, but I don't want to scale it down in. I just want to scale it down on the Z axis. So I can now hit Z and Z is going to constrain it to the Z axis and I can just scale that way down, make it pretty small and then just click to place that. And then I want to scale the whole thing up. So I'll press S to scale and let's scale the entire thing up a bit, kind of like that. Maybe just scale it up a little bit more. And then what I'm going to do is press E to extrude because I want to extrude that out and give it some thickness, but I want to push it in on the Z axis and then just bring it in like that and click to place that. Now you can see that this metal piece is actually coming out farther than this metal piece. So what I want to do is just select these faces and then bring them out a little bit. So I'm going to hold down the alt key and then just select right here. And that is going to select those rings of faces. And then I can press G to grab and I want to bring it out on the Y axis. So I'll hit Y and I'm just going to bring it out like that 
and then just place that right there. All right, that is really good. And then what I also wanna do is add a bevel, just like I added a bevel right here, I wanna add a bevel right down here. So I'm going to press the one on the top of my keyboard, or just click right here to go to the vertex select. And then to select these vertices, I'm just gonna hold down the Alt key and then just select right there. So it's gonna select all of those vertices. So then just like before, I can press Control B. Control B is going to add a bevel. I'll just place that there. That's looking pretty good. Let's navigate down here. And then I'm going to hold down the Alt key and then select that ring of vertices. And let's press Control B, add a bevel right there. All right, that is looking pretty good. Now, just like before in part Part one, we recalculated the normals on the tree, and you can see that the shading looks a bit weird. Double tap the A key to select everything. And then I can just press Shift N, and Shift N is the shortcut key to recalculate the normals. And I can tap back into object mode, and you can see that is looking much better. All right, so I'm going to press Tab again to go back into edit mode, and I wanna bring this metal piece up because it's kinda of low. So what I'm gonna do is press the A key to deselect everything. And then I just wanna select this metal piece right here. So I'm gonna hover my mouse over this object and press L. And L is going to select all of the linked vertices. So because all these vertices were connected, that is kind of a separate piece. Even though it's in this same object, it's kind of its own piece. It selected all of the linked vertices. So I can now press G to grab. G is going to move things. And then I can press Z and bring this up on the Z axis and I just want to bring it up much higher kind of to about there all right that's looking pretty good now I want to add kind of like a keyhole that you can you know put a key in to unlock the treasure chest so I'm gonna click right here on the face select or you can also press 3 on the top of your keyboard so I can now select this face and I'm going to press shift D to duplicate it and I'm just gonna push it into the mirror and you can see when I push it into the mirror because we have this clipping turned on it's just gonna push those faces together so I can now press G to grab and I'm gonna bring them in here and just kind of stick this over here. I'll also press S to scale and we're gonna scale it up a little bit and just bring it right there. And I'll bring it down just a little. All right, now I want to make this a bit thicker because I want it to be more like a cube. So I'm gonna press E and E is going to extrude this out and I'll just extrude it back. And you can see again, we need to recalculate the normals. So I can just hit the A key a few times to select everything. And then I will press Shift N and Shift N is going to recalculate the normals. All right, I'm going to now just click on this face and I'll press G to grab and then I will hit Y and I'll bring it out on the Y axis like that. And then I want to make the keyhole. So I'm going to press the I key. So the I key is going to inset the faces. So it's going to inset this face within that face. Now you can see that it's not connecting with the mirror. And so I want to turn the boundary off. So you can see right up here, it says boundary on. If I now press the B key, that is going to turn the boundary off. And up here, you can see it says boundary B off. So now that I've turned the boundary off, you can see that it's connecting with the mirror modifier. So I'm just going to make it a bit smaller, click to place that, and then I can press E to extrude and we're going to extrude this back pretty far to about there. All right, now I want to bring the whole thing in a little bit. So I'm going to hover my mouse over this object. And again, I will press the L key and that is going to select all of the linked vertices. So the vertices which are connected and I can press G to grab and then I'll hit X and we're going to bring it in on the X axis just like that. All right, and then again, I want to add some bevels just to um, give some faces there, some extra faces. So I'm going to click right here on the vertex select and then I want to just select the ring of vertices. So I'm going to hold down the Alt key and then click right here just to select the ring of vertices. And then I can press Control B and Control B is going to bevel that just like that. All right, and then I'm going to hold down the Alt key and just select that ring of vertices as well. And then let's press Control B and Control B is going to bevel that. And I'll make that a bit smaller, just like that. Okay, let's go back into object mode, see how that's looking, that is really cool. All right, so we are almost done with the modeling of the treasure chest, but I do want to create some handles on either side. So let's do that. So I'm gonna press the tab key or click right here and go to the edit mode. And then I'm going to click right here to go to the face select. So I'm now just going to select this face right here and I want to turn off the clipping so that it won't be connected so it'll be separate. So I'm going to click on this clipping button right here and that way I can now press Shift D to duplicate and I can bring this face out and you can see that the face is separate it's not connecting so I can now turn the clipping back on just by pressing that button 
So I'll press S to scale, and I'm going to scale that down, just place it there, and then I can press S to scale, and then I want to scale it back and forth on the Y axis, so I'm going to hit Y, and I'm going to scale this down until it's about a square. Place that there, and I'll scale the whole thing down a little bit more. All right, so I now want to go to the top view, so I'm going to press the 7 on the numpad. That'll take me to the top view, and I'll press G to grab, and I'm going to just bring this over here and just kind of stick it in the chest. So now I want to extrude this out and kind of extrude it and rotate it to create the handle. So I'm going to press E to extrude. Let's extrude that out, click to place that there, and then I can press E to extrude, and then click to place that there. Then I can press R to rotate, and then G to grab, just kind of bring that over, and then E to extrude, place that there, and then R to rotate, and then G to grab, and we're gonna stick that into place, and I'm gonna push it all the way in, so we're basically pushing it into the mirror. All right, that's cool. Now, one problem with this is that if you zoom in here, you can kind of see there's an extra face in there, and I really don't need that face, so I'm actually just gonna hit X, so hit the X key, the X key is going to bring up the delete menu, and we want to delete the faces. So we'll just delete the faces, and now that face is not in there and it's hollow. All right, that's really good. Um, so I'm now going to hover my mouse over this object and press L. So press L with your mouse hovered over the object, that'll select the entire object. And I actually want to press S to scale and scale the whole thing down a bit, and then G to grab and kind of bring it out a little bit. And then I also want to go right over here, navigate right over here and select this face, and I can press G to grab. Let's bring it on the x-axis and just push it in there. All right, that's pretty good. Now you could have it kind of coming out like that, just coming out straight forward, but I just want to rotate it down a little bit. So I'm going to again hover my mouse over this object and press L, and L is going to select all the linked vertices, and I can now press the 1 on the numpad, and that is going to take me to the front view, and I can press R to rotate. We're just going to rotate this down, and G to grab and just kind of stick this down there. All right, there we go. So I can now tab back into object mode. That's looking all good. Let's press Control S again to save, and that is it for the treasure chest. So let's just place the treasure chest right down here. So I'm going to press the G key, G to grab, and I'm gonna bring the treasure chest down. I can also press S to scale because I do wanna scale that down. Um, I do wanna scale that treasure chest quite a bit smaller. That maybe is a little bit small. I will scale it up a little bit bigger. And then I can press G to grab, move it over, over and R to rotate, just kind of rotate it up. So I just want to kind of stick it in the sand here. So just kind of find find a spot that looks good. You can also press the zero on the numpad and that's going to take you into the camera's view. And then I just want to kind of scale it up and also I will rotate it, so hit R to rotate, and then I can rotate it on the Z axis, so hit Z, and then I can just kind of rotate that over, and just kind of stick it wherever it looks good. And if you want to, you could also select the island object again, and then you can press the tab key, and tab is going to take you into the edit mode, and you can just like select one of these faces right here and press G to grab, and you can see I need to turn the proportional editing on, so I'll just right click to escape out of that, and I'm going to click right here, and that'll turn on the proportional editing, and I can press G to grab now, and just kind of make a little dip there, and then tab to go back to object mode. And another thing you could do is turn the strength down. So if this is a little bit too bumpy, I think it is just a little bit too jagged, you could turn this strength down. So I'm going to turn the strength value down to like a 0.15, and that's a bit better, so it's not quite as jagged. And then just stick this down there into place. All right, so just press Control S again to save, and we're now going to create the boat and the oars. So I'm going to press Shift S, and then Shift S will bring up this uh, menu here, this pie menu, and I'm going to move my mouse over to the cursor to world origin and then let go of the shift S button. That will just make sure that the 3D cursor is in the very center there. So I can now press shift A, let's go to mesh, and I'm gonna go up here, for some reason I added it up here, shift A, here we go, and I'm going to add a cube for our boat. And then I wanna be able to see the boat better, so I wanna just press G to grab, bring it up on the Z axis, and then I can press the S key and S will scale that down bring it down like that, and then I can press the period on the numpad and that'll zoom over to the boat. I'm going to press the tab key and that will take me into edit mode, and then I want to select this bottom face right here, and I'll press G to grab, and then Z, bring it up on the Z axis, and I actually don't want to use the proportional editing, so I'll just like scroll that way down, bring that up and place it there, and then I can just click on this button right here, or press the O key, 
to turn off the proportional editing. All right, so I now just want to select the back of the boat and I'll press G to grab, and then I'll hit the Y key to bring it out on the Y axis a little bit. And then I'm going to click right here and that's going to select the front of the boat. And I'm going to press the seven on the numpad to go to the top view. So I can now press E to extrude, just kind of extrude that out click to place it there. And then I will scale this down. So I want to press S to scale, but then I only want to scale it on the X axis. So I'm going to hit the X key and I'll bring that down a little bit and then maybe bring it down just a little bit more. And then I'll press E to extrude again. We're going to extrude this out and then I'll press S to scale and I want to scale it on the X axis. Now I actually want to scale it all the way in so that it is, is at zero. So it's just scale all the way in. So I can actually just type in zero and then enter. And that's basically just going to squash it together. So now it is just all flat. Now there is a problem with this and that is that they're actually overlapping vertices. So if you click right here to go to the vertex select and select this vertice, you can press G to grab and you can see there are overlapping vertices here. So what I need to do is remove the extra vertices. So I'm going to hold down the Z button, go over to the wireframe and let go. And then I just want to select all the vertices here. So I'm going to press B for the box select, just box select all of those vertices. So now that I have those selected, I am going to press the M key and the M key is going to bring up the merge settings. Now I want to merge by distance and that way any vertices which are really close to each other are going to be merged together. So click on by distance and you can see right down here it says remove two vertices. And there we go. So now if I select these vertices and press G to grab, you can see there is nothing overlapping. All right, I'm going to hold down the Z button and go back into the solid view. So I'm going to navigate right down here and I want to click right here to go back to the face select. And I actually want to select this face and then hold down the shift key and select the other faces. And I'm going to press G to grab and then bring it up on the Z axis and just bring it up like that. Then I want to extrude it down. So I'll press E to extrude. We're going to extrude that down, maybe bring it down about that far. And then I can press S to scale. And I want to hit X to scale it on the X axis. And I'll just bring that way down. And then I'll press G and Z and maybe move that up just a little. All right. And then what I'm going to do is click right back here to go to the vertex select. And I'm just going to select this front vertex right there. And I want to bring it back. So I'll press G to grab. And then I'll click with my mouse wheel, constrain it to the Y axis, bring it back just a little. And then I can hold down the shift key and select this vertex and then hold down the shift key and select this vertex. And I'll press G to grab, click with my mouse wheel and just bring that in there. All right, just like that. So we now have a nice front for our boat there. Now I wanna make the boat hollow. So what I'm gonna do is click right here on the face select and then I'm going to select this face and then let's hold it down the shift key and we can select the other faces. All right, just like that. And then I want to delete these faces. So let's press the X key to delete and it's gonna show the menu and I want to delete the faces. So click on faces and now our boat is hollow. Now I do wanna give it some amount of thickness. So I'm gonna press the tab key to go back into object mode. And then I wanna click right over here on the modifier properties. And just like the branches on the tree, I want to give it the solidify modifier to make it thicker. So I'm gonna click on add modifier. Let's go to generate and we're going to go right down here and it's way down here, kind of more at the bottom under generate the solidify. All right. So if you zoom in here, just kind of zoom in there, you can see it's a little bit thick, but I just want to change the thickness up a bit more and I'm going to hold down the shift key as I drag this value to make my movements more sensitive like that. And then also I want to click on the even thickness button because you can see if the even thickness is turned off, it just doesn't look quite right. Like this is a little bit thicker and this is a little bit thinner. So I'm going to check mark the even thickness button and that looks quite a bit better. So I now want to press the tab key to go back into edit mode and I'm going to go right down here and I'm going to select this face because I want to create like some little seats in the boat. So I'm going to press shift D to duplicate. I'll hit Z to bring it up on the Z axis, just place it there. And because of that solidify modifier, even though it's a plane, it looks like it's more like a cube. So I'm gonna press S to scale and let's scale that way down, make it about that small. And then I wanna scale it back and forth. So I'll press S to scale. I wanna hit X to scale it on the X axis and bring it out like about that far. And then I can press G and Z. So G to grab and then Z to bring it on the Z axis and just stick it right down there in the boat. And also I think this thickness value, I think I could turn that down just a little because it's a little bit small. All right, that is good. I'll press G to grab and then hit the Y to bring it back on the Y axis. And then I wanna duplicate this and move it over to make one more kind of little seat. So I'll press Shift D to duplicate. 
and you can click with your mouse wheel to constrain it to the y-axis and just bring it over and place it right there. All right, that's really good. So we now have a little low poly rowboat. So I will tab to go back into object mode. All right, so let's create the oars now. So I'm going to press shift A and let's go right here to mesh and we're gonna add a cube. And then it adds the cube down here. So I can press G to grab and Z to bring it up on the Z axis, just bring it up like that. And then I can press S to scale and we wanna scale this pretty small. And then I can press G and Z, so G to grab, bring it down on the Z axis and just place it down there. And then I can press the period on the numpad to zoom into it. And I'm gonna scale it down even smaller because this is gonna be the handle for the oar. So I'll make it pretty small, kind of like that. And then I will press the tab key and that's gonna go into edit mode. Now I want to bring out the handle and make it longer. So I'm going to select this face right here and then I'm going to press G to grab and then I will hit the Y to bring it out on the Y axis. And I'll make that pretty long because this is gonna be the long handle where you would grab the ore. I'll just bring that out there and then I'm going to select this face right here and I'm going to press E to extrude. Let's extrude that out, click to place that. And then I can press the seven on the numpad to go to the top view. So I wanna scale this out and make the or. So I'm gonna press S to scale and then I'm gonna click with my mouse wheel and let go to constrain it to the Y axis and just bring it out a little bit, place that there. And then I can press E to extrude and then I will press S to scale again click with my mouse wheel and just constrain it to the x-axis and bring that out a little bit. Then I can press E to extrude and we're gonna extrude this way out to make the or and then click to place that there. And then we're gonna do pretty much the same thing that we did here, but just kind of make the end rounding a bit smaller. So I'm gonna press E to extrude. Let's bring that out, place it there. And then I will press S to scale click with your mouse wheel to constrain it to the x-axis and just make that a bit smaller and then i can press e to extrude place that there and then i can press s again to scale click with your mouse wheel or hit just hit the x button to scale it on the x-axis and bring that in all right there we go and then i think the or just needs to be a little bit longer so i'm going to select this face navigate over here and then hold down the shift key and then just select this face right here so i want to scale this out and just make it a bit thicker and then i'm also going to press the o key again and that will turn on the proportional editing. So I can now press S to scale and I wanna scale it out on the X axis, but I'm gonna scroll my mouse wheel down so it doesn't really affect the handle, it just affects the or part, just the part there at the end. So I'll just bring it out a bit farther, kind of like that, tab back into object mode and that is better. And I do think I want the or to be just a little bit thinner. So I'm gonna tab to go into edit mode and then I'm going to double tap the A key to select everything. And then I will press S to scale, Let's scale it down on the Z axis and just make that a bit smaller and then click to place that. And we can also click on this button right up here to turn off the proportional editing. All right, I'm gonna tab back into object mode. So let's just select the oar and then hold down the shift key and select the boat. So I now just wanna bring the boat right down here. So I'm gonna press G to grab. We're just gonna bring that down and then just kinda press G to grab and bring that over. We're just gonna stick it in the water there. And I think also I could just scale the boat up a little bit and then I can press R to rotate. We're going to rotate it on the Z axis. So hit Z and I just want to rotate the boat over. You can just place the boat wherever you want. Um, I'm just going to place it right here. And you can also press the zero on the numpad to go into the camera's perspective and just find where that looks good for the boat. So I'm just going to put the boat right here. I think I will rotate it over a little bit more on the Z axis and just kind of stick it right there kind of on the edge of the island. All right, so I'm now going to select the ore because the ore is kind of floating here and I want to press the period on the numpad and that is going to zoom me over to the ore. So I'm gonna press G to grab, just kind of bring the ore over and I can also rotate it. So press R to rotate on the Z axis and rotate that over. And actually you can see that that ore there is kind of long, like the handle is a little bit long. So what I'm gonna do is press the tab key and that's gonna go into the edit mode. And then I just want to select this face right here. And I just want to bring it back a little bit. So I'm going to double tap the G key on this face and that is going to activate the edge slide. And then I can just make this a bit smaller and then just place that right there. All right, I'm going to tab to go back into object mode. And then I want to press R to rotate rotate that over, R to rotate, and G to grab. And we're just gonna stick this OR kind of in the water. And you can also double tap the R key and that's gonna activate the trackball rotation and just kind of rotate this in the water kind of like that. All right, that is good. So I now want to duplicate the OR and just put one right here in the boat. So I'm gonna press Shift D to duplicate 
and then R to rotate. And then let's just bring this in here. Just press G to grab and just kind of stick it in there and mainly try to get it to look really good from the camera's perspective because wherever the camera is, that's where it will render. So I can press the zero on the numpad and that's gonna go into the camera view and something like that is pretty good. All right, so now we have a little boat there. Let's press control S again to save. So the last thing that I wanna do in this part is to create some clouds. So we're gonna be creating some low poly clouds. So I'm gonna press shift A and to create the clouds, I'm gonna be using the meta ball. So it's not a mesh, it's different than a mesh. It is a meta ball. And I wanna add the meta ball ball. So let's add this in and then I can press G to grab and I'm gonna bring it up here just bring the cloud up into the sky so I can see it a little bit better. All right, now if you click right over here on the object data properties, you're gonna see the different settings. And then I wanna turn the resolution up a little bit because it is a bit low quality. So I'm gonna just click right here to change the resolution. I'm actually gonna click and drag and I'm gonna turn the resolution up a bit. And I think a resolution of like 0.2 looks pretty good, 0.2. And then the render will also be set to a 0.2. All right, so that's pretty good. And I will also press S to scale that down. Now, what's really cool about these meta balls is that if you press Shift D, Shift D is going to duplicate the object, and you can see that they are going to kind of merge together when they get close. So I can just like continue to duplicate these around, and I'm going to just continue to press Shift D. So press Shift D to duplicate, and you can see that it's really easy to create a cool cloud shape. So this kind of looks like a like a stylized cartoony cloud. So just continue to press Shift D to duplicate. And we're just going to duplicate all of these little spheres here and just kind of make a puffy cloud just like that. And if you want to make more clouds, you can. I'm just going to be making one cloud and then I will just kind of change the one cloud. So what I want to do now to make it low poly is I want to add the same decimate modifier just like we did with some of the other objects. But we can't actually add modifiers to the meta balls. So we have to first convert the meta ball objects to a mesh object and then we can make it look low poly. So to convert it to a mesh object, I'm going to press B for the box select and I'm I'm going to drag a box around all of the meta balls. All right, just like that. And then to convert it, I'm going to click right here on object and I'm going to go right down here, way down to convert. Now there are some different things you can convert it to, but I want to convert it to mesh. So click on mesh. And now you can see that it is a normal mesh. And if you press tab, that's going to go into edit mode and you can see that it is just a normal mesh. All right, so I'll tab to go back into object mode. Now, something else that I wanna do is I wanna shade it flat so it looks low poly because right now it's kind of smoothing out those faces. So I can just click on object and I can go right down here and shade flat. And also using the object context menu, you can shade that flat. So now it looks a bit low poly, but I do wanna make it a bit more low poly. So I'm gonna click right over here on the modifier properties and let's click on add modifier. And just like some of those other objects, I want to add the decimate modifier. So once you add the decimate modifier, you can play around with the ratio and that is going to get rid of more and more of the geometry. So now it looks like a little low poly cloud. Let's press G to grab and just kind of bring this cloud over kind of bring it back and then I'll press S to scale and we'll scale it down. And I just want to put it in the background. So behind the island, and then I can press zero on the numpad to go into the camera view and I'll press G to grab and just stick this right there. All right. So I'll press control S again to save. And this is going to wrap it up for part two of the tutorial series. So we've done quite a bit more modeling in part three. We're going to be duplicating some of the clouds, putting the clouds around. We're also going to be adding some rocks and some grass, and we'll also be doing some lighting and materials and red rendering out the final image. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you've been enjoying this tutorial series and I hope you've been learning a lot and I hope it's been easy to follow along. And when part three is released, it'll be right up there on the end screen and also the link will be in the video description. And again, if you'd like to help support me and this YouTube channel, then checking out my Gumroad store and Patreon page are really great ways to help support the channel. So thank you for watching and I will see you in part three.